all food business operators must show that their ready-to-eat foods are safe in terms of Listeria monocytogenes. It's really important that they do this because it's a legal, legal obligation under European microbiological criteria legislation. And there's a particular regulation, number 2073-2005, which has limits for different categories of ready-to-eat foods. So all food business operators must show compliance with that regulation. The challenge that arises when you're trying to show effective control of listeria um, ready-to-eat foods is that you're not sure exactly what type of evidence is going to be acceptable to either your customers or to the competent authorities. And there's some examples of how uh, food business operators have failed to do this because recently in the media there have been incidences of listeria outbreaks in foods or there have been cases where ready-to-eat food products have had to be recalled because the food business operators have not been able to show that they've got effective control of this organism in those food products. Well, there are a number of different types of evidence that um, food business operators can gather. The first of these is challenge testing. This is where you take a food product and deliberately inoculate it with listeria and you store it over its normal storage conditions and see if it grows in the product during its life. Another way you can use is predictive modelling. This is where you're using a mathematical model to effectively predict the likelihood of listeria growing in the food product. And you do this based on the properties of the food, such as its pH and water activity. Another one are durability studies. And again, you're looking for the growth of listeria in the food product, but this time you're not inoculating it. You're just hoping that you can find a naturally contaminated batch and therefore you see what would happen to the levels of listeria in that food product if it ever happened to become contaminated. And finally, there's what we call historical evidence. So all food business operators will gather information on the likelihood of finding listeria in their food factories or in their products. And if you collect all that data together, then it will show the competent authorities the likelihood of their food even being contaminated in the first place with this organism. The problem with looking for evidence for listeria control is that there isn't a general consensus across the whole of the food industry. So competent authorities and customers might give more credence to one piece of evidence than another. So what we're really hoping to do is to get um, a broad approach that everyone can buy into so everyone views the different types of evidence in the same way. We're just about to start a new research project at Camden BRI which is looking into the whole issue of effective control of listeria and ready-to-eat foods. So I'm quite excited to have the opportunity to work with industry. And we're going to gather a group of experts together which represent manufacturers, retailers, scientific experts and competent authorities to sit down and look at some evidence that we're going to gather from case studies. So we're going to go into two or three different uh, factory environments producing different types of food and we're going to gather evidence from the different approaches that I've mentioned before. So we're going to do some challenge tests on the foods, we're going to look at historical evidence, durability studies if we can find some naturally contaminated batches and some predictive model modelling and then we'll get the group together and they'll look at the impact of the different sources of evidence and hopefully we'll be able to assign scores to these so that anyone wanting to see if they've got control of listeria in their factories know that if they get a score of 15, then they're safe. If they get a score of maybe 5, then there isn't enough evidence to show that they've got listed, listeria under control.